what is depth? Mm, am I 2D? I mean, to you right now, I am 2D, but also you kind of know that I'm 3D. I don't look like uh, I'm tune shaded or I'm NPR shaded. I look realistic. Why? Why do I look realistic? Even though clearly, I'm just a collection of pixels performing for you at a particular frame rate on a social media platform. What's going on? Well, the reason why I look realistic, right? The reason why you know, or you can assume that I am three-dimensional, I'm depthy, is because of all of the visual cues that you're absorbing at this very moment. These cues, when perceived in a 2D format, are called monocular cues. So cues that only require a, a single viewpoint, right? Which is what 2D media requires. A couple of monocular cues include focus. So I'm in focus, and then the stuff behind me is uh, less in focus. I believe the technical term is out of focus. Texture gradients are an indication of depth. Relative side is an obvious one. Um, occlusion, object that I am talking in front of that you can no longer see, just to you that those objects are behind me. You notice, like, the more I do this, the more serious, the more passionate I am about this project. Simple, simple stuff, right? Um, but in the context of, of real eyesight and in the context of multi Space, which is holographic space, um, we use a um, binocular tool, binocular visual tool. And these clues include retinal disparity. So retinal disparity is like the difference between uh, your two viewpoints, right? One viewpoint is one eye, the other viewpoint is the other eye. And these examples of retinal disparity include parallax. Parallax essentially is when an object closer to your binocular viewpoint seems to move faster when you adjust the view than objects behind. And that is exploited by engineers who create displays, others exploited by uh, lenticular displays, and um, other kind of artists play with this concept all the time. There's also something called vergence, which is a binocular depth cue. And vergence is when um, your eyes converge at a specific point. So objects that are closer to the binocular viewpoint, your eyeballs, will require the eyes to rotate toward it. And then objects that are farther away will require the eyes to sort of readjust and become more like a parallel vision. Convergence and parallel vision also sends messages to your brain about how far away and how close an object is and thereby communicates the question of depth. Dang, what a mouthful. We've learned so much in, in, in just a few minutes that this video has been running, don't you think? If you think, hit that like button and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Anyway, so what is a depth map? A depth map is an image or an image channel that communicates the, the distance of the surfaces of objects in a scene from a particular view. Typically, the lighter or more luminant a section is on the depth map, the closer that object is to the viewpoint. The less luminant or darker an object or area is on a depth map, the further away it is from that particular viewpoint. Conversely, some depth maps actually code luminance in relation to the focal plane as opposed to the, the camera view or the standard view. Right, so let's hop in. The first depth map we'll look at is Savka, which you can find on Hugging Face, which is a machine learning library that's free and open to the public. And on Hugging Face, the UI is pretty friendly. You can just drag an image, wait a few minutes or a couple of seconds, and then a depth map will be generated from that image. And these, this is the result. As you can see, there's not a lot of dynamic range in this image. There's not a lot of lighter points. Um, and most of the image seems to be in a smaller range of darker pixels. So it's hard to tell, even just with the eye, what images, what parts of the image represent objects that are closer to the viewpoint. Let's see how it looks on the looking glass. Next, let's look at Midas. Midas is another machine learning model that I found on Hugging Face. As you can see, the results are a lot better. Um, it is a little bit less nuanced than I would want. The subject in the foreground, the person is almost entirely white. So that's kind of just represented in the looking glass as we'll see shortly as just one, uh, one surface, one flat plane. And that's not necessarily what we want in the most complex um, hologram. we will look at DPT. So DPT is also found on Huggy Face, and you can see that the depth map generated is a lot more complex. Look at the gray pixels that are apparent in, in, the, in the subject. You can see the outline of my chin here. You can see sort of the difference between my forearm and my hip as shown with this gradient here. So, so far, DPT has done the best job. Let's see what it looks like on the look. Next, we'll check out the Runway ML depth map generator. Currently, they only have a desktop generator for video, so I just imported it. The MP4 is just one continuous frame, the image that you see here. And as you can see, there's a lot more dynamic range. 
Um, the chin is really prominent. Again, there's that gradient by the hip and that, that forearm. Uh, the towel and the railing is a lot more defined than in the Midas. So, so far, this does seem like the best step snap. Let's check it out on the looking glass. Finally, let's have a look at the Looking Glass in-house 2D to 3D converter and see how it compares. Right off the bat, it is clear that there's a lot of nuance going on. There's a lot more gradients in the foreground. Um, you can see the chin is outlined. You can kind of see the vivid chin there. It, there's some range there. Um, you can see the here. Maybe a little lower than the collarbone area. And it looks really, really, really good. Let's check it out on the Looking Glass. And finally, let's check out the Detomo uh, depth map estimator uh, that uses a monocular approach to creating a depth map. This map has a lot more colors, which just provides more opportunity for different views to be encoded. Um, however, the looking glass doesn't read color depth map, so it just kind of reads it as a typical depth map. As you can see, this looks kind of funky on the looking glass. On Looking Glass Studio, there's a small checkbox that you can toggle on and off that inverts the map for you, which I needed to do in this case. And even still, it seems like the gradient between the top of the head and the background kind of blurs together. So it looks like my head kind of stretches way back into the frame, which is not exactly what we want. But it's still cool to know that um, the Looking Glass Studio software can read the monocular depth map, even though it's not monochrome. So all in all, it seems that the most detailed depth map I've seen with the naked eye is definitely the in-house Looking Glass converter. Um, however, personally, I find like the Runway ML depth map looks a little bit better just because the dimension on the face isn't really um, very precise on the hologram. And that detail is not necessarily needed for this particular frame. So if you're experimenting with different images, maybe landscape images, the in-house 2D to 3D converter depth map may be the way to go. But I think it's important to experiment with different depth map generators and to see what serves you best as an artist in generating a depth map for a specific use case. The last depth maps I wanted to share were generated by someone who trained a stable diffusion model using depth map and had the model output the image in the style of those depth maps. So instead of doing like a more precise calculation using a machine learning model that does a more precise calculation that's actually looking at the all the elements of, of depth that can be extrapolated from a color map, it generated a depth map as if it were a style. So someone inputted a photo of a skull and then out came quote unquote, depth map of that skull um, based on inputs, depth map as inputs that affected the style of the output. So this was super cool to play with because I brought the depth map, there was four of them, into Photopea and then um, started using the bucket tool to color in these depth maps and make them more artistic, you know, put filters on them and that kind of thing. And then I dragged the color version of the depth map and the depth map into place with the color map on one side, the depth map on the other and then brought that into Looking Glass Studio and viewed it on the portrait. It was really cool to see how different each depth map looked and what it brought forward and what it pushed back. And it was also super interesting to a approach depth map in this sort of inverted style. So instead of working with a photo or a render that has been preciously created over time and, and hoping to generate a depth map that accurately represents that initial art piece, it was working backwards. So it started with a depth map and then created the color map based on the depth map. And it kind of scratched a totally different part of my creative brain, and I found it a really fun exercise. So check them out. Thanks so much for joining me in this video. It's been a rock and roll. Uh, quick update on this I want to make more videos more frequently. Scripting out everything and cutting everything to make it perfect is really time consuming. And my creative ideas, my creative projects, the things I'm thinking about on a daily basis, uh, like move at a much faster pace than my editing does. So I'm probably going to say um a lot more and it will be apparent that I'm speaking to you in like a more of a real time manner. So that is a little update. If you are curious as to what this new path will bring, subscribe, uh, follow me on Twitter and um, yeah, let's, let's make some videos.